Let's squeeze one more in here before we go to the after show. All right. We'll, we'll go uh, with uh, Trenton here. What's up with Alex Collins? Uh, should owners be worried that Baltimore has zero draft capital invested in him? I, I know as an AC owner, I feel as though I've missed my chance to sell high and will be stuck holding the bag on an RB that's slowly losing a job he earned last year. Uh, you could you could start with this one. I mean, well, at this point in the season, there's no doubt that you feel, and justifiably so, you feel like you've seen a lose a loss of value. I mean, uh, you know, Trenton before the season started, Alex Collins was one of everybody's favorite running backs to pick, and that was a that was everybody you know a lot of people's first running back that they wanted to get if they went zero RB quote unquote. And Alex Collins was getting traded and traded for first round picks all day long. And there's no doubt about it. He's lost some value right this second. That's just the name of the game. If, what have you done for me lately? And lately, Alex Collins has been fumbling, and Buck Allen looks pretty good. It, and that air show is back. You know, John Brown's doing well. It's just not the beat-up offense that it was at the end of the year where the, all they had was Alex Collins. Now they have more options, which traditionally helps out a running back mm -hmm. to have more options. But that volume he was getting at the end of the year was very substantial, and he was looking good And he was it. starting to get the catches, which yes, was really turning the tide down on to, down to, everything that he was doing. Down the stretch there. But right now, as we stand going into week six here, there's no doubt you left some left, you lost some value. Um, I don't see how you're going to get much value out of Alex Collins right now. So I would hold him to see him go yeah. back up. It's kind of like a Freeman thing a little bit here. Well, he's not coming from anywhere of the stature. Right. But I mean, he was at the end of last year being put up on a little bit more of a pedestal there. I mean, like if you didn't, if you didn't like if you have him right now, if you didn't draft him this year, you paid nothing for him. Good call. Um, so maybe or if you didn't, obviously if you didn't not trade as, for him over the salt over the summer. Right, you could have right. traded for him and paid a lot. Not as high profile of Devonte Freeman not going in the third rounds, but I mean fifth sixth round was some Alex Collins sure in startup. So I mean not super far away from. Um, I mean, for me when I watch Alex Collins play football. I like everything that I see, I, and he can catch the football. Other than the fumbling that takes him from right, the bench. Right, and that, that, that really, uh, just when I was, I don't have the game log in front of me right now, uh, but he was having some decent games with not a whole lot of touches because he is really good with the ball in his hands, and he's very hard to bring down. Yeah. Um, and then to finally see him get back to that goal line opportunity where Buck Allen was making a living off of recently, and at the end of last year, he was – way out snapping him in the goal line area to get that opportunity back and then to fumble it was just a dagger yeah at that particular Hate junction in that. the season right now yeah uh terrible for your alex collins stock but to get back to him as a player like i think this guy is an amazing not maybe not amazing football player but a really good football player when you look at all the pff metrics um and the forced missed tackles yeah. and cr yards created and stuff like that. He's one of the guys that's higher up on the list when you sort by X amount of attempts because he didn't have as many as attempts as some of those higher end guys because he didn't come on until later coming from last season. And then even into this season, like forced missed tackles um, was something that he, he's been high up in and you can, it's evident on the field. He's really hard to bring down. He's elusive and shifty. And then when you do get a hold of him, like, He's not going down with a with a garbage arm tackle. Like, oh no way! He's he's, he's not going down. He's easy. really hard to wrangle, and I do think there are some hands there. So he is basically on a one year deal with them. He'll be a restricted free agent next year. They can do with what they want with him. Kind of going on into the season, he's basically theirs if they want him. Uh, moving on to next season, so I mean, it could be just like last year, where by the end of the season, he's resumed. Uh, being awesome he hasn't really been that bad fantasy points wise uh, for the entire season maybe not quite as what you drafted him for you thought maybe that he would yeah there was a assume. couple of 12 point games but there. then you know once that kenneth dixon came or was still hanging around and they're starting to love him a little more you had to start feeling a little worse about your alex collins there and for whatever reason they don't feel the need to give one guy the work over there in baltimore right well and that's you you've you said a lot of good things right there. And one of the things that I liked about Alex Collins was a couple of games ago, he was catching some balls in space and just looking nasty after the catch. And there's no doubt about it that, you know, he's, 
his um, the efficiency metrics you can see that stuff on the field right but the quantity wasn't there the touches weren't there and when you got those fumbles on top of fumbles like that and especially like especially last week when it's a close game Mm -hmm. a division rivalry right and they could have won and he fumbled at the goal line it was a field goal slugfest and that's just one of those games where it's it just sucks to see that right uh, that's your guy you know, if if when, yeah. you know, you love to see that if you don't have Alex Collins on your team and it's the other guy's guy, but when it's your right. guy, that's that's so just a bummer. Last week he got the receiving touchdown that that helped you out, and then week one he got the rushing touchdown that really bailed you out. Week uh, three he gets the rushing touchdown with eighteen for sixty eight, and then week uh, two he bailed you out with three for fifty five. So I mean, he had eight point nine, twelve, sixteen point four, eleven point five, and then in this field goal slugfest where he fumbled on the goal line he had 7.6 but got 12 carries if you could keep him around the the 12 to 15 threshold and and you could see those three catches yeah happen he's obviously he's not your workhorse guy but i mean there's i don't think there's you're not like he's not absolutely the the worst player in the world he's still rb 25 right now i mean i know that's nothing great that's not what you wanted and that's not what the expectations were but if you think about how bad it's been to still be one pick one player outside of that bottom rb2 range it's not horrible is he's not your rb1 right now and that's terrible um so i can see any side of the fence here whether you want to sell or buy i i I was kind of interested in buying alex collins recently um, so I, I would, I think it's much like the Devonte Freeman thing. You can't sell right now. You have to wait until this guy either regains a hold of and being buzzed about yeah. right now. He's kind of shat on. So you, you don't want to sell those kind of guys right now. Yeah. He's standing in a pile of poo poo right now. There's no doubt about it. So Trenton, you, I would say, hang on to Alex Collins. If you can, if for some reason you want to, you know, send out a message to, if you send, if if you send out a message and say, Hey, Alex Collins is on trade block, you might as well just drop his ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so you don't send out a group message like that. You basically send out a trade to everybody in the league. And basically you send out maybe Alex Collins and a two for everybody's first rounder and see what happens. And then if the one per, if there's one person is highly interested, they'll send you a decent trade offer back. And now you're negotiating. Um, you know, I don't, that's really about the only way to play it. You just got to hang on to them. And, but the, things can change so quickly right especially with running backs and you saw it at the end of last year either with either alex collins could get hurt and this is a moot point or buck allen could get hurt and then all of a sudden they're leaning on alex collins and mm-hmm. it's a whole nother story and all it takes like casey said about somebody else all it, all it takes is two or three weeks of alex collins doing what he was doing last year and he's right back up there right and it's just sometimes it feels like a couple weeks can feel like an eternity in fantasy For football sure. you know that's two, a good point two or three weeks of being down it can feel so terrible and right like right now if you're talking about potentially maybe buying alex collins he just fumbled this week so maybe the, he's in the doghouse this coming week and this is a really good opportunity to see him on the buy low sector mm-hmm. next week if, yeah. it's, if he's not already in the buy low which he is he's i just we don't really believe in selling low until we you know there might be some cases where you got to sell low because low is going to go lower Mm -hmm. and alex collins really can't go too much lower Mm -hmm. obviously from expectations it's felt like a free fall right and it sucks yeah but you're already down here now so what you know yes you it's you know basically trenton goes i feel as though i've missed my chance to sell high you have you have but i think i think there's a good opportunity for it to come back around he's He's still moderately young. I don't think he's super old. He's he's 24, just turned 24. Yeah. And he's a chance that he could end up going somewhere else or they they put, they sign the tender for him and he comes back. Um, well, you see flashes in the pans out mm-hmm. of running backs that are undrafted and stuff like that. But, I mean, the way Alex Collins played last year and the way he even looks this year when he does get the ball, he's obviously an NFL back. Mm-hmm. He's not going to wash out. He, you know, he's he's going to be there. Maybe he is just an RB, too. Maybe he maybe he is never going to be that the guy that is, you know, super, super productive. Maybe he will just be an RB, too. And maybe you should sell him for two twos. I, you know, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind taking two twos for him if I had him right now. I don't think anybody's giving that to you at this moment. You no. just need a couple of rebounds. Well, Trenton, for fun, just for fun, tell us what happened. Send everybody in your league, Alex Collins and a two, for their first rounder and see what happens and, and, and hit us up about it. I might even start with a three. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I see your other uh, remark down here, Trenton, about Tyler Lockett. We're going to take that over to the after show. That's called a tease. And then your other statement of the quarterly analysis of rookie wide receivers and how their values uh, have either followed your path of expect or uh, as you expected or uh, have gone in an unexpected direction. That's a great idea. And, uh, you know, we look into doing something that down, down the road. But I think this will end the, uh, the pleasure chest. Uh, be sure to go. We'll answer the rest of the questions on the after show. And uh, appreciate you joining us. Yep.